So friends, many of you recognize 706 Union Avenue. They call it Sun Records. Never Sun Records, it was Memphis Recording Service. Although it was a place where Sam did have the Sun Record label. You can see here it says Memphis Recording Service, 706 Union, also Sun Record Company. But my point is, is that Sun sign was never on the front of the building. Did not exist. Now once he sold Elvis to RCA, he moved around the corner, he had enough money, and created Sam Phillips Recording Service at 639 Madison Avenue, and also Select the Sounds Recording Studio at 79 South Mendenhall, which was his home. The sun sign was not there at the time Elvis walked into this building with his friend Ed Leak and made a recording on that fateful day. It was the very first time he had ever recorded a record of any kind, and you hear stories that he told Marion that it was for his mother, and we're going to explore that. Was this really for his mother? Happened right here at this recording studio, friends. So we're going to delve into the different things that happened around this day. So it was a Saturday. Ed Leak was with him. You've heard the story he was working for Crown Electric. The day he walked into Memphis Recording Service, that's not true either. He was working for M.B. Parker as an assembler for 90 cents an hour. And if you notice on the tax return, it says his occupation was semi-skilled. And he worked there a very short time, which happened to be the month that he walked into Memphis Recording Service the first time. Doing a month-long uh, kind of a uh, one of those jobs where it lasts for one month, a contract type job. And this is where he was working at, at M.B. Parker. Notice there is no mention of Crown Electric because... It is not true that he was at working for Crown when he walked in there the first time. So many of you know he walked in that day, met with a lady named Marion Kiesker is what they called her, and she recorded the very first time that Elvis was ever recorded. So first we're going to look at the fact that her name at that time was not Kiesker. In the 1954 Memphis City Directory, her name is Marion K. for Kiesker McInnes, radio announcer 689 Tanglewood. And by the way, she lived in that home until her death. And up till now, I've not been able to figure out why she, everybody calls her by her maiden name, Kiesker. Every entry that I found of her in the phone book from the 40s to the 70s, uh, I'll say McKinnis. You know, so she was definitely McKinnis. So this impromptu recording session happened on a Saturday, as I mentioned. It was July the 18th, 1953. And Elvis, you've heard the story where she said, who do you sound like? And he said, I don't sound like nobody. And I think she was probably asking him questions. He was nervous. And she asked him the question, what are you making the record for? I believe he probably said that it was for his mother. Did his mother ever get the record? The answer is no. So let's find out what happened to that record. Where did that record go? That's what I want to know, and I can tell you the answer to that question. It's a very interesting answer. So let's start with this. Do I believe that Elvis would make his mother a record? Absolutely, I do. It is reported, though, that they did not own a record player at this time. This is the actual record that was made that day, July the 18th, 1953. My happiness on the front side. And you see the torn label right there. That's an indicator. And that's when your heartaches begin on the flip side. And that label is actually torn. It's got little places in it you can see right there on both sides. And something interesting is actually on the other side of that label. But that's a different video. So 1954 directory, city directory. If you look right here, look for the name L-E-E-K right in the middle, and it says Charles E. and Lucy. He was an electrician at ICCR. They lived at 1754 Jackson Avenue. Under that, you see Edwin Leak, Edwin S. Jr. student at Humes High School, 1754 Jackson Avenue, which is Ed Leak, Elvis's friend that he attended high school with. Now, Charles and Lucy were actually Ed's grandparents, not his parents. But they both lived, you can see, at the same address, 1754 Jackson Avenue. In the next photograph, I'm going to show you Elvis in the back of the classroom. You can see him right back there. Collar up in that Elvis-esque look. And then you see Ed Leak 
in the front of the same classroom right there. They were definitely friends and they definitely hung out. And Ed Leak was definitely with him that day as well. In fact, Ed actually loaned him the $4 to go make the acetate. And according to, I've heard uh, different versions of it, six weeks and uh, two months. So 45 days and 60 days, Ed claims that he begged Elvis to go make this recording. And it took Elvis that long to get the courage up to go make a recording. Sounds odd, but if it wasn't for Ed Leak being uh, persistent, you may never know who Elvis was. Now, you're going to see different prices. I've seen $4.25. I've seen $3.25. I've seen $3. Right here is the price list for Memphis Recording Service. It was a 10-inch, 78, two sides, $4 right there. So that clears that up, friends. This is a, another myth uh, debunked. It was exactly $4, and Ed Leak loaned Elvis that $4 that day. So can you imagine an excited Elvis with his friend Ed Leak jumping in a vehicle with this exact record with him that he just made and taking off to go hear himself on a record the very first time an Elvis record was ever heard? Let's go see where they went. The address is... 1754 Jackson so it says it is 546 now that is 558 so let's go stay tuned friends let's go do this so Clearly, I don't know the exact path that he took, but I know where the house is. So I would assume that him living in Memphis as long as he did, he knew these roads better than anyone. He cut his teeth driving here. So let's see. So friends, this is 1754 Jackson. Right there, that house is the house that Ed Leak lived in. That is the house, if you can imagine, that a young Elvis Presley and Ed Leak, with the very first record Elvis ever made, went to, to listen in that house. So we told the story earlier that Elvis said that the record was for Gladys. What happened, actually, though, is that record came to this house after Elvis listened to himself on the record player inside that house. That record stayed here. That record never left this house that day. So they did not own a record player. Ed Leak's grandparents had a nice record player at their home, so he came here and listened to himself. My happiness... That's when your heartaches begin. And then went, okay, I like it. And then took off. And did not record another acetate until a couple of months later. But it happened right here in this house, friends. And Ed said that he actually kept the record in the attic of this house. So I'm going to go knock on the door. You know that I'm kind of forward. I want to see. I want to see the attic. I want to see inside the house and we'll see what happens. I also want to know if the people that are living here now have any idea what happened in this house. I'd be willing to bet you that they have no idea the history behind what went on in this home that changed the course of music even today, friends. That was well over 60 years ago. Actually, almost 65 years ago, and you know that I came up and knocked on the door, rang the doorbell, Nobody would come, but the next time that I'm there, you can cool well believe I'm going to try again. I'm going to ring that doorbell and knock on that door until I get somebody there that either lets me in or tells me no. We know he came right up these steps right here 
to go in and play that record because there is no side door. The door is on the very back of the house. So they came right through this door. So friends, this is the back of the house. You can see the door, the back door is dead in the middle right there. And I would love to know which room in the house they played it in. I think maybe even an upstairs room. When I say he kept it in the attic, I think his bedroom or where that record player may have been, may have actually been in the attic part. So friends, that's Ed Leak's house right there that you see through the cracked windshield. The question is, how far is it from here to Memphis Recording Service, 706 Union? The answer is three point seven miles, ten minutes. So I don't know that they left from here and went to there, but I knew they left from there. I do know they left from there and went to here. So what happened to this record after that? It stayed in that home many years, and uh, Ed Leak was an airplane pilot. Uh, for a commercial airline. So he moved around quite a bit. He ended up in Florida. And after he passed away, his family, I believe it was his niece that had sold it, put it up for auction. And it sold on January the 8th, 2015 through the Graceland Auctions. And it sold to a young man from Nashville, Tennessee called Jack White that was with the White Stripes and he owns Third Man Records. He took the record took it to the Country Music Hall of Fame, Gordon Stoker's son that is involved there, actually took the record and pulled the recording off of it, and Jack made copies of this that you can buy. I actually own one, and even the label looks just like that, and this is Jack that day looking under the label. And by the way, he paid $300,000 for it, and it is on display sometimes at the Country Music Hall of Fame. It's not there year round, but there are times when you can actually see that original record that happened that faithful day. So friends, this is my replica copy of My Happiness and you can see they've simulated the torn uh, label and everything, even the, the little hole right there. Something that um, was pointed out to me that I did not know was on this, and this is another Ashley Drew Fine. It actually says, written in the record, see if I can find the, if I can get the, there it is. Let's see if I can find it, stay tuned. So what I was trying to do is get it where you can see this. It says, Ed Leak, right there. I don't sing like that no more. That has some significance. And then on the other side is that's when your heartaches begin. And written in it, in this record, I've cleaned it and it keeps getting dirty and dirty and dirty. It says, Thanks, Marion. He is a good ballad singer. You see that? I hope this comes out on camera. It's hard to get the lighting right. So on this side, it says, yes, Marion, he is a good ballad singer. And on this side, Ed Leak, I don't sing like that no more. So I will tell you the significance of those two things. Stay tuned. The Marion saying is what she actually wrote about Elvis when he came in the first time that he was a good ballad singer. The other one, I'm not 100% sure. I couldn't find where Elvis had actually said that to Ed Leak, but Ed kept that uh, record in his attic for seven years. And at some point he ran into Elvis in Chicago and asked him what he should do with the record, which I believe may have happened in 1957. And Elvis just told him to just keep it. So right here, I'm going to speculate on something. And you know, I'm a musician, singer, guitar player, bass player, just an overall musician. And, you know, I've recorded some things, but I've never really recorded anything that I was satisfied with. And I'd be willing to bet you that this was Elvis's first attempt and he wasn't happy with it. So that's why he didn't want it. 
he didn't think that it was uh, the what he wanted it to be, even though we listen to it and think it's fantastic. That's uh, he was his harshest critic, which is typical of musicians. And I'd be willing to bet that that's why, in his heart of hearts, why he didn't take that record. He left it with Ed Leak. And interestingly, Elvis, Ed Leak, his family, and immediate friends that he allowed to listen to this are the only people that heard these recordings until he licensed them and allowed them to be released in 1989. These two recordings were hidden for 35 years, and Elvis never knew that they were released to the public. So now you have a little bit more of that Elvis puzzle. I think I gave you quite a few little facts here and a lot of things set the record straight on some things that have been told wrong over the years. Pun intended. I'm also sad that Ed Leak never really got to enjoy the money from this thing. He did make a little bit of money selling the recording early on, but nothing else. Thank you so much for watching and tighten up. Jack White tightened up and bought that record.